He sure has quite the grip strength. Look how cute. The most expensive axolotl setup. Wow. I'm going to go ahead and latrine this little fella. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, bats like to hide in these little crevices. He cannot mate with females. He'll just kill them. All right, everybody. All the rhea are over here now where they belong, where there's nice long grass. And all the leaves on these little mesquite trees can be eaten by them. They love them. And I don't love them, which is perfect. We have a ton of long grass throughout this whole area, and that's going to be perfect for baby and his wife to eat. And now I don't have to worry about these guys dying from myopic shock from all those machines. Do you feel better now, my little queen? She's just a small gray baby. I was cleaning up the trash back here last night because I knew the baby might eat some. I found some toilet paper. A lot of toilet paper that was crinkled up in little balls. I wonder how that got there. Man, who would have put toilet paper crinkled up in little balls with brown stuff on it in the back here? Huh? I also blocked the edges of this off with these panels so none of the animals can get back behind there. I don't want them getting stuck. And once again, the baby longs for the open road and ponders the infinite. Good morning, garbanzo bean. But boy, oh boy, is this area going to be real fertilized. Especially after I dump all this out. Oh, that's nasty. I'm gonna move this over so that they can drink it. Bro, typical petunia behavior. Come on, petunia, go. I'm gonna stab you with this petunia. All right, I got a call about an injured hawk in Goulson, but I can't find my welding glove. And we finally have someone scheduled to come out today from the city to inspect this. So it should be good. Okay, so we're finally done working for today. The inspector did come out and he said that we would pass if we regrounded the wire. Thank Thankfully, Colton rented a trencher and we just got that hammered out today. Looks like this is the new poop spot for all these boys. All right, everybody. Use the left lane to keep left to merge onto I-30. I'm currently going south. Keep left. Uh, I'm currently going to pick up a squirrel that a woman's been taking care of for much too long. A nice older lady. So my job is just going to be to take this little fella and be real mean to him and just grab him by his little face and go bah, 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 bah. so that way he hates people and loves other squirrels. And this little fella doesn't really need to be bottle fed anymore. But these are all of his bottle feeding yeah. logs. Time to bring a squirrel to Bucky. Oh here's a nice little parking spot. Wow. Bucky. And no guys Bucky's isn't just a quote unquote giant gas station. It's a way of life. Okay, I'm looking for pecans. Cherry sour. But we'll give him one of these. I fed the bird. I saved this bird. Okay, guys, this is the squirrel that the woman raised without a permit, but she did an amazing job, honestly. A lot of people will feed him the wrong stuff and then they'll die. As you can see, this little guy takes the bottle really well. And look at this. He even sucks in the syringe on his own a little bit. I'm not even touching the syringe. So at that point, you kind of know that he's a little too old to be taking this. I'm going to go ahead and latrine this little fella right here. Here. After that, we went to the brunch for All Things Wild, which only 10 of the 2.7 million of you went to, kind of cringe. But they brought all the ambassador animals out, like Bujo and Speedy. This little red screech owl with partial blindness. A small, threatened Texas tortoise. Big Ounce's long-distance girlfriend, name of Daffodil. And this other partially blind screech owl. Wow, what a great brunch, huh, guys? Let's go over to this spyglass overlook in Austin. Right here in the middle of downtown Austin, there's a big old cave. A beautiful place place where one can get free bats you just got to go in here scan along the ceiling bats like to hide in these little crevices up in here let's see if we can find a nice juicy one and people have little fires and do all kinds of drugs and rituals in here isn't that fun dang it no bats today all these dang kids and their drugs are scaring the bats out of my cave man this place is beautiful but even the cactuses have people's names carved in them how did someone even put a beer can there whoa thankfully i still got to see some bats at the bridge down town these guys fly out from under it every night my favorite weekend activity is spitting on the bats from the bridge i fed all these grackles because they look kind of hungry currently in the walmart parking lot after that i got invited to a reptile convention in waco texas sean from yox2 reptiles was there with his legless lizard look at this beautiful thing and as you can see it's not just a snake it's an actual lizard and there are a bunch of people sewing axolotls for next to nothing all right everybody i'm leaving but i did get a ton of mice Frozen feeders for all the raptors we're gonna rescue next year. And a wife for Master Ugwe. 
Ethan from Texas Hedgehogs and Exotics gave us a really awesome deal because he watches the channel. Thank you, Ethan. We love you. We appreciate you. Uncle Ben finally just might be a tortoise grandpa. And this guy was selling axolotls for 30 bucks a piece. Binja, a boy eating a banana. And Jared from Pineapple Exotics, who recognized us at the show, gave us this Culver's Dwarf Cayman. He was given to me because he cannot mate with females. He'll just kill them. Anytime this guy was ever brought to another female to mate, he just tried to kill them. So he's now living here with us. I'd put a sponge filter in here to clean everything. And to drain the water, I just have to do this. Is it just goes right down this little chute here, out into the yard. I'll work on the execution of that a little bit better next time. Eventually, he's going to go ahead and move over here once we get power ran here. I'm going to fill this up with sand and mulch. I'm going to fill this whole thing up here with water. So he will have a basking spot in the sun all day here. He should get plenty of sun in here. But all right, everybody, here he is. This is my adorable little Cayman. And this guy can get out of the water whenever he wants. This is the most expensive axolotl setup anyone's ever made. Not because of the cute little stand or the state-of-the-art aerator, sponge filter, and decoration. But this little cave here is made up of pure Ferrari aluminum. The hit YouTuber Whistling Dingleberry's car. And now it will be the home to all of these adorable little creatures. Name of Steve and Hero Bride. Okay, guys, take a look at this. These are my first ever axolotl. They are all female from what I've been told, so they are not going to be accidentally breeding. And we're doing a creature feature today, you guys. A creature feature on axolotls. I know you guys wanted to see this for a long time. You guys have been asking me for a long time. Uncle Ben, when are you going to do a creature feature on axolotls? Well, here you go. Hey, can you guys please help me? I can't find my... <laughs> But this is an axolotl, you guys. They can be found in Milco, Mexico, uh, in the lakes and canals. These guys are neotenic, meaning they don't undergo metamorphosis to reach adulthood, and they keep their cute little adorable Look gills. Look at this beautiful little creature. In the wild, these guys are critically endangered, but thanks to TikTok and Minecraft, these guys have become very popular in the pet trade. And they can also regenerate limbs, rebuild their jaws, spines, and even brains without scarring. But all of these guys have their own little caves that they can hide out in. Hero Brian can live in this spooky cave here and a couple of these little guys i'll probably be giving as a gift to sean or actually trading with him for one that's a different color and now we are officially playing minecraft in real life oh my goodness look how cute this man is okay that's enough axolotls for now i'll let these guys get used to this little place without the lighting because they are nocturnal i'm gonna let these guys get accustomed here but okay we're at sean's place now i just went ahead and put the rest of the sand in here and now nigel has this beautiful Beautiful enclosure with all this delectable sand to bask on. This man's been getting into the papayas. They're teaching him over here, but he clearly doesn't like it at church camp. Okay, Master Uwe, time to meet your wife. And Gustavo, our other rescue crocodile, is doing very well here at Sean's place. Okay, so we have one more nice week where Master Uwe can meet his new wife. And get this out of here just in case. We're going to use this to decorate the croc enclosure. And this boy's about to go home to meet his very first wife. They're finally meeting each other for the first time, and they just don't care about each other at all. Like I said, we have about one more week of good weather where these guys can just walk around. And a true Sigma lets the ladies chase him. As soon as I get water in here, this is going to be the perfect little spot for our new Cayman. No, you stay out of here, boy. There it is, you guys. We are officially done, and I'm ready to move Gustavo or our new baby in here. And these guys have all been free-ranging because we're setting a ground wire here so we can run electric to this building. But the cappies are doing well in here and they have both stock tanks so plenty of space to swim and graze but just look at all this grass you guys these babies are getting bigger and more agile every day and they love to just run around and jump on things we're gonna move this cringe little man to all things wild so he can try one more time to be with a ton of other raccoons and hopefully that'll help him get wild but chances are this little guy's gonna have to just be an educational ambassador which is okay because he's adorable but this is why you guys don't rehab them on your own because most rehabbers would just euthanize one that is a little too friendly like this especially if they already have an educational ambassador raccoon badly but also rather conveniently river over at all things wild who was their little educational ambassador raccoon has just passed away and this little fella has an even better temperament than river did so hopefully this fella will live a long life as a little educational ambassador animal where he can teach the public about raccoons oh look at queen we also sawed in all of this and queen and poggers are still in this enclosure until we can finish running that ground wire 
there around the barn. They've got plenty of fresh water and I'm not worried about them ripping this liner because it's crazy strong. I've been running the sprinkler system back here like crazy so that these guys will stay watered. But we have sawed everywhere here for these clappity blappity. This whole thing here is my turkey enclosure. As you can see, Remington is our part in turkey for the year. Remington number three, that is. I'm gonna have to catch the garbanzo beans and throw them back out there because I think he's stuck in here. I love him. He sure looks tasty. <laughs> just, oh, just kidding, buddy. There you go. I have Soldier Boy free ranging out here because he's my favorite. Literally just one heron came and murked half of the fish that I have in here. But the gar were too big for him, so I'm thinking about just doing a gar pond. Maybe just having one large alligator gar that's maybe about three feet long. We have all kinds of jets and water flow, so anything could survive in here. This is this little man's first time swimming in here in three days. I cleared out all the trash back here, except for the wood. So all the Rhea have plenty of grass and space to eat back here. And I'm letting these guys destroy our mesquite trees. Because these are basically just little jagger bushes at this age. The eagle flight pen is officially done and ready to have any kind of bird we want in there now. And all of these muscle mommies eat out of my bucket. So all these ostriches are friendly with me now. But all these guys have plenty of food and water here. But the baby here has been enjoying all this fresh new saw. And his wife comes up and attacks me now too. Because she sees him doing it. Look guys, she comes up to me too and she'll grab on Sweet wampum. But yeah, the baby's been enjoying all this new sod. He's in a lot more of a fighty mood now because the temperatures are going down. Oh, oh, but it still doesn't really hurt. The baby's still got a little ways to go before he's a big old buff boy. But he sure has quite the grip strength. <laughs> and as the last thing I'm going to do today, I'm going to go ahead and put Big Ounce in his little enclosure. Because this little guy hasn't been out here in a little while. At least about three, four days, this little guy hasn't gotten to run around in here. So he's really excited. And now Big Ounce gets to hang out with Pop. Bob and Queeb. As you can see, he's already running over there to talk to him. This little dingus is for sure ready to be moved in with some other little squirrels. I actually have to hold the syringe to keep him from doing it too fast. Because if he does suck it too fast, he will aspirate and potentially get sick. Okay, buddy. Time to let go. Time to let go now. Come on. As you can see, he's weaning. He's drinking water, eating pecan, broccoli, apples, grapes. And he even has this little wheel for exercise. And look, guys, they're eating their food. What is it, Pierce? He's still, what? <laughs> wow. This is the greatest day of my life. Right, good work, buddy. Wow, you guys. Nature is healing. From all of us here at the Urban Rescue Ranch, I love you, I appreciate you. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. And don't forget to like and subscribe.